Hello and welcome back to Poetry Corner. We've got a slightly different poem for you again uh, this evening and it's a poem by Robert Browning called The Pope and the Net. It's a poem where the key is in the ending, the final twist of the very last words. A poem with a lesson and a warning for us um, about our lives as individuals and as part of a church. So um, bear with it, it's slightly archaic words being Robert Browning in the 19th century, but he's telling the story of a humble fisherman who got made Pope and who kept a net in his entrance hall as a reminder of his humble origins. Without further ado, here's The Pope and the Net. The Pope and the Net by Robert Browning. What, he on whom our voices unanimously ran, made Pope at our last conclave. Full low his life began. His father earned the daily bread as just a fisherman. So much the more his boy, mind's book, gives proof of mother wit, becomes first deacon and then priest, then bishop. See him sit no less than cardinal ere long, while no one cries, unfit. But someone smirks, some other smiles, jogs elbow and nods head, each winks at each. If faith arise, St. Peter's net instead of sword and keys is come in vogue. You think he blushes red? Not he, of humble holy heart. Unworthy me, he sighs, from fisher's judge to church's prince. It is indeed a rise. So here's a way to keep the fact forever in my eyes. And straightway in his palace hall, where commonly is set some coat of arms, some portraiture ancestral, Lo, we met his mean estate's reminder in his fisher father's net. Which step conciliates all and some, stops Carol in a trice. A humble holy heart that holds of newborn pride no spice. He's just the saint to choose for Pope, he chats. It is my advice. So, Pope he was. And when we flocked, its sacred, sacred slipper on to kiss his foot, we lifted eyes. Alack, the thing was gone. That guarantee of lowlyhood eclipsed that star which shone. Each eyed his fellow. One and all kept silence. I cried, pish, I'll make me spokesman for the rest, expressed the common wish. Why, father, is the net removed? My son, it caught the fish. Well, I hope you enjoyed that poem. Like I say, the twist is in the ending. My son, it caught the fish. The Pope in the story, the man who got made Pope, had put on a very convincing front of humility, uh, having the net of his humble origins up in his entrance hall to remind himself and others of his humility. Until the day he reached the highest office of Pope, and then he cast off the pretense of humility. It's a sad, cynical picture, but I think perhaps it's a believable one. We all know that humility can be a front, can be a fake. We all know that it's possible to um, give the appearance of being oh so very humble, while inside being eaten up by pride and ambition. The protagonist of the poem clearly was ambitious of being made Pope and knew that pretending to be humble was the way to get there. It's easy enough for all of us, I think, as human beings to play a similar game. Certainly, all too often we encounter people in the church who put on a great front of humility and will um, view themselves, or at least claim to view themselves as very humble, who will make a great show of being humble. But when you dig a little deeper, or when power reveals the true person underneath, they're not as humble as they looked. And while it's easy to point the finger at others, let's look at ourselves. As Christians, I take it, we know we are supposed to be humble, to not push ourselves forward, to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought. But how often is that something just on the surface of our personality? How often do we pay lip service to humility, make a show of being 
mild and lowly in spirit. And yet the moment somebody slights us, the moment somebody makes us look bad, the moment somebody misrepresents us in a way that can make others respect us less, instantly we're on guard. Because we might claim to be humble, but we will fight for our reputation. Is that real humility? Sometimes I know I've encountered those who will make a great show of speaking the language of humility. I am the least in the lowly list of, of people. Um, but when you dig a little later, a little, a little deeper, they're not willing to put anyone's interests before themselves. They're not willing to listen to others or to serve others. So what about ourselves? Do we just speak the language of humility? Do we just make a show of humility? There's a great line of C.S. Lewis's, which is, humility is strictly underwear. It's not for show. I think too often we make our humility outerwear. We make it a cloak that we wrap around garments of pride that are our real identity. We're jealous of our reputation and our standing and our status, but we wrap it up in humble seeming words and gestures. Lewis reminds us that humility needs to be worn on the inside, next to the heart. We don't necessarily have to make a show of it. Indeed, sometimes the, the pretense of humility can be dangerous, I think. The outward show of humility can so easily become a substitute for the real thing. Humility is not about our outward presentation of ourselves, it's about our inward attitude. Humility isn't about running ourselves down and insisting we are the meekest and lowliest and the most useless of people, while secretly guarding our pride. Humility might come with confident speech. Humility might come with an outward show that is aware of its gifts and seeks to use them. Humility might come with a high office. So long as there's humility on the inside, so long as inside we are recognising that we are not more valuable in God's eyes than the person next to us. So long as inside we're recognising that we're sinners saved by grace and if it were not for Christ, we would be bound for judgment. Sometimes I think we need to be very careful of wearing a cloak of humility instead of your undergarments of humility. So what is the real attitude of our heart? Are we truly humble in how we view ourselves and the value of others? Are we truly humble in how we stand before God? Or do we cultivate deep down a sense of entitlement? A sense that we deserve to be forgiven and saved, a sense that we're worth more than others, a sense that we've got more to offer, whilst wrapping it in an outward cloak of humility. Do we just keep the net until it catches the fish? Or will we have humility as underwear? Jesus didn't always come across as humble. He preached and told the crowds that their eternal destiny would depend on their attitude to him. He claimed the right to reinterpret the law, to rebuke the religious leaders. He was very bold because his humility was deep down inside. Let's imitate him and not the Pope with the net. Amen. <laughs>